This playthrough is rated T for teen. Time to find out if these vampires sparkle. Greetings and salutations, viewers. Well, I'm back here with another episode of Shadowrun. In the last episode, we defeated the rat spirit for the dog spirit, and oh yeah, we gotta go back and talk to him for the reward. We'll do that in a second. We need to contact some vampires and get into their dog blade place in the dog fortress. Man, we knew uh, vampires were emo, but this just takes the cake. Call themselves Dark Blade and everything like that. Anyway, we need to use the uh, cred stick here on the video phone to contact them, so we need to talk to... Hey, I forgot you could actually talk to Akimi. Uh, I don't see... Uh... Oh, yeah, we could actually... Um, uh, when we got the tal called the talisman guy for about... Uh, or when we had to talk to the talisman guy about the vampires, we could have technically called him, but the thing is we need the stake anyway, so it's better just to go... Um, go towards go to the talisman shop which i actually need to go back one more time but i wanted to get some money and do all this other stuff before buying it it was basically the last set of potions but i'll do that later what's akimi say actually i am the mage akimi sutamasa why have you disturbed me i ask you again why have you disturbed me i was in the intrusions of idiots you're wasting my time do you have a purpose for calling me no not yet i just wanted to call you because i forgot you got your number Julie, you do not understand the depths of the pain that you are inviting. Okay, fine, bye. Thank you for using control. Yeah, for some reason I thought this was Akimi. I don't know why I said that last episode. That was just a, like, my brain just, like, shut off because I don't, uh, you know, it's just one of those, like, weird situations. So, sorry for the misinformation there, so. All right, anyway, let's actually use the cred stick officially, so. All right, let's talk to D-Blade at 826664. Hello, the Dark Blade Club. Johan speaking. What can I help you with? I am sorry, sir. I think you have the wrong number. He'll only respond to one uh, word as far as I'm aware of. It's the magic fetish. You say it is an amulet with a bat at its center. My employer might be interested. Would you please drop by the Dark Blade? I'll make sure the gate is left open for you. All right. Yeah, I could have gone somewhere else to get that. So anyway, let's head to the Dark Blade Mansion. Um, we also need to stop by the dog spirit, because I forgot to, uh, go, well, I, you know, we were quick on time, so I decided to do that next episode. I actually generally almost forgot to go back to the dog spirit. You technically don't have to after defeating the ride shaman, because you get the information about the, the jester, but, you know, we do get something else for going back to the dog spirit, so might as well, so. Alright, come on, Kitsune. Oh yeah, in the last episode, Kitsune is now a permanent party member as long as she doesn't die. So we'll see how that works, though. But luckily, she like when you rest, her bot she does get healed and everything with like that, too. So, um, And we will find a way to give her a little bit more armor here in the future. So, no worries. Like I said, I, I, when I played this game the first time, when I found out about her becoming a permanent party member, I tried to keep her as long as I can. It Near the end of the game, it gets a bit tough because of the... How, more, how dangerous some enemy encounters become, especially like boss encounters. Because, you know, she only has the 50 HP and she she doesn't get much more than that, so. All right, let's go back to the docks and talk to the dog spirit again. And then we'll go, uh, we'll go, uh, I guess technically now that uh, up at, not too far off, we have actually got a really good grind spot for Karma. I could probably avoid killing the rest of these guys, but yeah, let's get to a few extra new in while we're here, why not? I said you could avoid all these guys. You don't have to fight them all, because um, it's not one of those games. It's not like a turn-based RPG where you're you're stuck in the um, uh, stuck in the area until you defeat everyone, which is really nice. You know? I mean, I don't mind turn-based RPGs like that. It just it really depends on the game or your mood or everything like that. Sometimes you just don't want to get stopped. You know what I mean? Ow! Blaster pretty heavily too. Alright, come on. Whoa, you took a bit of damage. How much do you got right now? 25? Mm, better heal yourself. Not going uh, not going back to the uh, hotel. I want to go to the D-Blade place. The D-Blade! Hey, Dog Spirit. How's it going? You have done well. You have served Huchikawa. You have cleaned the world of our an enemy. Dog takes from you his own, and this time you will travel with Huka Iwa at your side. Jake, you're a true you are a truth a shaman. Follow your calling. Jake's a shaman? Well in the Shadowrun universe you don't have to dress up like a Native American to be a shaman. Anyone can be a shaman, really. 
it just depends on if you have a animal spirit that basically um, you make a pact with. Follow your calling. You know it to be true. <laughs> you know it to be true. You know, feel it. It's in your senses. No, that's not true. That's impossible. Uh, know it to be true. Technology has thrust, uh, technology been thrust upon you. You're fated to use it to destroy your enemy. Yeah, in the Shadowrun universe, if you, it's hard to be a shaman if you have uh, electronic implants in your body. So, like, he has a data jack, so his humanity is weaker. So, in the tabletop RPG, Jake would not be a very efficient shaman because he'd have low humanity because of having... Every time you put pieces into your body, you lose your humanity. So, you become more mach more machine now, the man. And shamans are very bad if they have tech inside them. You can play shamans with tech, it's just... Usually you get a, a you get some negatives if you have tech inside of you when you cast spells and stuff like that. Obviously we ignore that for the purposes of this game, other than the dog mentioning that to us. So. I am Ukichiwa, the spirit of the dog. I will guide you to your destiny. Uh, I don't think you really have anything else to say at this point. I don't think you have anything about the... Let's see, Jester Spirit. A powerful enemy. He toys with you. He is the spirit of technology. Decay. Find such a place and you will have found his lair. Recite his true name and you will have bound him to your will. Hmm. We just have to find his true name and where he's at. Perhaps the next location will tell us? Uh, let's see. Just... That answer is hidden in the mists. Okay, so it's on anyone who he doesn't know about. Uh, I think... I was trying to think if he had any extra dialogue. I guess. I don't know if he knows anything about the vampires. Nope. Okay, fine. Jacob now has the Powerball spell. Now, he doesn't automatically give you that. You have to have the Ghoul Bone and the Paperweight. The Paperweight is, in, I think, in Gluttman's office, and the Ghoul Bone is in the graveyard on 10th Street after you rescue the Shaman. You have to rescue the Shaman to get that to, to appear. Uh, to cast Freeze, you'll need the Residue of 2C Creatures. Okay, so when you, when the Dog Spirit, when you placate the Dog Spirit, he gives you uh, stuff to like figure out how to get spells and stuff like that. So to cast the spell freeze, we need two sea creatures. So right now we got the octopus with the black ink, but we got one more, but we don't have that yet. So, um, but yeah, if we didn't have the items for the power ball, he would have told us, I forgot what he actually says. I think it says like a heavy, heavy weight or something like that. And something from the undead or something like that. So sorry for, you know, grabbing those things before he tells us what the exact dialogue is, but it's, it's one of those things that's not that big of a deal, but. Okay, I'm gonna go that, and that. Okay, now we can go to the D-Blade place, so. Hopefully we'll be able to get this in this episode. I might have to split it up, because the this next section takes a little while just from the difficulty of it. Well, or the danger, I guess, more or less, so. All right, actually, I need to actually do, before I go into the D-Blade place, I actually need to, I should probably make a backup save really quick. Uh, give me a second, I'm gonna make a backup save, because of, I want to show you two alternate outcomes that can happen in the um, the D-Blade mansion, so give me a second. Okay, so I made a backup save. So for this part, I don't want an extra Shadow Runner, so Kitsune, sorry, it was cool, baby, while well, it lasted. Goodbye. Yeah, you can actually kill your allies if you just want to get rid of them, and then she'll reset back at the Jagged Nails. And as far as I'm aware, she doesn't say anything about you murdering her, so... It's just assumed that she died via wounds from battle or something like that. So, yeah, if you uh, oh, if you uh, have a shadow runner here, it can basically it basically forces the game to go into very specific situations. Oh, there's a gang member here. Okay, didn't expect that. Um, yeah, always, the firebomb gang members always run up next to him because their firebombs do a lot more damage than uh, um, than their melee attacks do. So. My mess jacket will protect me from most of the damage. Yeah, so you have the, the, uh, um, ooh, scary. Look at that. It looks like something from out of Castlevania. But, uh, yeah, we can go inside the mansion or see if we can find it. There's a secret passage over here. Most people who play this game miss the shop the first time. I think I did too, so let's see what this guy's got. Hello. Uh, people call this the hidden shop just because it's so easy to miss. Don't touch unless you're buying, of course. If you even got pieces you can't even get on the open market. There's some more stuff coming soon. I'm just waiting for the heat to die down. We don't deal in information, Bob. Strictly guns. Um, yeah, this guy, it, it's true. He actually does get different inventory depending on the at what point in the game you're at. So if you defeat certain major objectives or defeat certain bosses, his inventory will uh, change. So Right now we got uh, grenades at 80, so it's a little bit cheaper buying them here now. So if you don't want to go back to the gun yard to buy your 
uh, area to buy your guns. Uh, or uh, Old Town. Let's see what we got here. Um, you got the Defiance T 250 shotgun, which is cheaper here than where we could have originally purchased it. So if you want to wait this long, though, by this point, you probably needed the gun to fight some of the enemies, especially the rat, rat shaman. But there it is, you know. Uh, I prefer getting the shotgun as soon as I can, so personally. Um, we get the Uzi 3 submachine gun at 30,000 New Yen. Holy crap, why would you buy something like that? Well, the Uzi is slightly more accurate than the shotgun, and you can hold down the attack button to shoot. So you know how like when I shoot with my weapon here, I have to press the A button like multiple times over and over and over again? I'll show it. I don't want to do it in the actual store. I don't want to actually kill the guy. So see how I just have to shoot? And even with the turbo control, you can always shoot as fast as you can. But you remember like the troll orc in um, the arena? Y yeah, you just hold down and you go and just keep shooting, shooting, shooting. So it's actually a pretty good weapon. The problem is it's so expensive. 30,000, you only buy that if you just have the money lying around. It's a luxury item at best, so. And then we get the Ares uh, Viper here. But yeah, really nothing here worth buying right now because of the what we've got, but something to consider. Um, if you get to the top of Drake's Tower, um, he actually has the like one of the better armor sets in the game at Armor 4. So that's one reason you might want to go through Drake's Tower is to unlock the, uh, the armor piece, but uh, now nah, I'm going to hold off on the Uzi. Maybe I'll show it off like near the end of the game when I get some extra cash. So, all right, anyway, let's go inside the uh, manse. Hello. Now, if you run past this guy and don't talk to him and try to go into another room, it'll automatically activate all the um, people inside the mansion here. So if you want to try to do this non-violent, let's talk to the guy. Excuse me, sir, the dark blade is from Invis only. I'm sorry, but I'm going to ask you to leave the premises. You know we talked on the phone, right? Anyway, if we want to... Um, go through this peacefully. Let's ask him about the magic fetish. Ah, uh, the amulet. Mr. Vladimir is expecting you. Vladimir? Huh? Okay. That's close to my name. He's in the reading room. First room on your left. Please go through. Yeah, if you run, like, if you don't talk to him and just go into the next door, everyone will start attacking you, so. Yeah, very nice place. Hello, Mr. Vladimir. Hello. Ah, Mr. Vladimir. Welcome to the Dark Blade. We don't often have guests, but what we do, what we do, they tend to stay. <laughs> Wonder what you're referencing. How come you come here on business? I'd be happy to have you for dinner. Can't really do a good bill of go see, but don't waste my time. I can be most unpleasant. Um, yeah, he'll only really respond to. Actually, you could probably ask him some of the other stuff. So you seek to control the Jester Spirit. Even if I gave you his true name, you would never get close enough to utter to his face. Give me the fetish first, then I shall have you uh, give you the word that you'll be your downfall. Throw me the lamp! No, we're not going to throw him the lamp. Oh, well, maybe. Um, <clears throat> let's see, what else does he know? Something about being first. Don't waste my time! Okay. I thought there was like another thing we could ask him about. Let's go to the Dark Blade Club, see if that... Nope. Okay, I think that's probably all we can ask him. Uh, let's see. Now just double. Let's see. Uh, I guess not. Not really in this case. Okay, I was just double checking. So, all right, ask him about the magic fetish. An amulet inscribed with a bat. Why have you admit you have my interest? What do you seek for such a prize? And then the jester thing. Now we can't just blast him. Or we can give him the fetish. So let's go ahead and give him the fetish just for this version of playthrough of the game. So let's give the magic fetish to Vladimir. Oh, right. We have to be like right on top of him. So fine. I don't, I just, I don't, I don't want to talk to him anyway. Whoops. Oh, uh, great. Yeah, uh, sorry. Uh, actually, oh, we never checked the leaves when we grabbed those. Let me examine that real quick. They are bright green leaves used for, you know, the spell. All right. Let's give him the magic fetish. Finally, I have been waiting for this. It brings back memories of Transylvania. You lived in Transylvania, huh? You're a fool, but nonetheless, I will tell you. To control the Jester's power, you must utter his true name in his presence. He can be found in the ship's bones at Bremerton. The name you seek is Nirwanda. Bremerton, huh? Actually, Bremerton, believe it or not, is an actual location in Seattle. I think it's like a Navy shipyard or something like that. In this game, it's similar to it. Uh, so, the reason you may want to go do the whole given the fetish thing, despite, you know, maybe not giving a 
clearly bad guy the item is that it allows us to go to Blair Tent first and to get access to eventually get some spells, which makes this section a little easier, but I don't think it's I mean, that's up to you, obviously, but I'd prefer just going straight through this area right now, so. Alright, well, thanks for the information, dude. What the? He passed straight through the wall. That's what he does if you shoot him, by the way. He'll just turn a vampire and run away, so you're like, oh, that's cool. Alright, well, uh, thanks for the info. Let's, uh, go to, uh, Limerton and get out of here, so. Excuse me, where are you going? And yeah, you immediately get attacked as soon as you, uh, as soon as, uh, you leave. Vladimir basically sticks his dogs on you, so. And then... Um, now you can go just, if you don't want to mess with, um, like, get, going after, um, uh, Vladimir for basically setting his dogs on you, you can basically go to Blamerton and go on with the rest of the plot. However, we obviously want to encounter him, so you can go through the... Now you can't even defeat this guy. <laughs> just have to leave. But, yeah, so, um... So that's, uh, so we could go to Blamerton and just skip this whole section, but obviously you want it for the experience, money, and so forth and so on, so... All right, now let's see what happens if you actually have a Shadow Runner in your group at this point. So I'll be right back. Okay, we're back with Kitsune this time in tow, so that way we can just have an extra party member to do this. So let's head on back into the dog, the dog play place, and uh, oh, another gang member. Uh, we'll take. Oh, he's targeting uh, Kitsune. Ah, I don't do that much damage to these guys in this next area. Well, are tough. Actually, they have a lot of defense and HP on that, so, uh, fuck, I have to redo that because of that, shit, why did it show up, okay, hide it, stay hidden please, must have accidentally moved or something like that, <coughs> alright, we're back with Kitsune and Toe this time, or Kitsune, so let's go to the dog blade place, and see what happens when you have a shadow runner in there. Although I've heard sometimes a shadow runner won't actually attack the person, so I guess we'll have to find out. Um, I said they do, but maybe it depends on the character, because I I was playtesting with Kitsune, Kitsune, and for some reason it wasn't working, so I don't know. Hmm. Yeah, she's not attacking him. I guess maybe it depends on the shadow runner you get, or maybe the maybe it's a different version of the game. So yeah, I did it off screen just to double check something, and then I found that it wasn't working. Like oh okay, hmm. weird. Yeah, she's not attacking him, so... Alright. Whatever. I guess maybe my information's off. I'm not sure, so... Anyway, go. let's check Vladimir. So I guess I could have just skipped the whole doing this by myself. But, oh well. Yeah, he basically just has... So we're just gonna skip him, so we're just gonna attack him, so... Get out of here, Vladimir. Get out of here. Okay, anyway. Let's uh, take his computers that are here. Or, let's... Uh, uh, let's uh, cyberdeck him. Since we're at computer six, this should be no problem. And we got mostly full HP, so. You don't have to do these, but this computer, I think, gives us money. The other one gives us some information that'll help us out later, so. Alright. Let's, uh. Ooh. Hmm, we can't go in any directions. But we can take the phone book and attack it. Alright, lines are open. Which means I can go in. <clears throat> Technically, I don't even need to do this. Um, get, get, grab this one. But I'm gonna grab it anyway just to show it. So, yeah, I think yeah, it's the. And you only w lose one HP for um, miss miss attacking a square, so it's like why not, right? Okay, what do we get? Dark blade account eight nine six seven three four three four two seven four five ten thousand New Yen. Thank you. And discard. Yeah, the discard data is the basically the other thing I grabbed because it's not useful. So. <clears throat> So anything that's not used for the um, useful to you, you just toss. So, all right, let's go into this computer. Yeah, this is what you get for leaving, Vladimir. Let me shoot up the place. Ha ha ha. All right. Let's see. I believe it's this one I need to grab. Yep. Data file obtained. What data file? Yeah, unfortunately, sometimes it doesn't tell you. So let's go. <coughs> no, excuse me. We got DFDB Dest Dester. Jester from that. So let's check it out. After meeting with Jester, he agreed to aid us in our plans. He's unaware that if he resists, he, I know his true name to not be Nirvanda, and therefore we can bind him to my will, Vladimir. So he lied to us. So yeah, if you give him the fetish and everything, he tells you his name and then runs off. 
and basically you find out he lied to you. So I'm, not that you need the fetish anymore, but it's just the whole helping the bad guy type of situation. So, but that'll help us in a story element. So we know his name is not Nirvana. It's something else, which means we need to get his true name. And the vampire knows his name, which means we need to fight him. Yeah, that's probably, like, you could go to Bremerton after learning about it, but, uh, you know, you need to, it, it helps to get the true name, so we have to fight that vampire, so, excuse me, where are you going? So we have to, now that we've, uh, done that, now the whole place is attacking us, so, uh, let me look up the stats for these guys. Some of these guys have, like, really high, like, uh, um, uh, like, HP and everything like that, I have to look up their stats. So the mage has 60 HP, 4 attack, 3 defense, he can drop, he gives 10 experience, he can drop anywhere from 70 to 100, uh, new yen, so let's see what he drops. And then all the rooms are going to have enemies in there too. So if you want to get some extra karma as well as uh, um, money, you want to go through every room and fight everything again. So just making sure HP is good. So, all right, yeah, if you walk back into his office, you get attacked by four enemies here. So we've got the cruel man. He's got 30 HP, four attack, two defense, drops 11 HP and 70 to 100 new yen. Then we also got a new enemy here, the samurai warrior. So he's got a machine gun uh, there. Uh, or Uzi type of thing. He's, he's got 30 HP, 4 attack, 3 defense, um, 9 experience drop, and 70 to 100 um, new yen. See another cool man? He's a very cool, cool man. Luckily, they haven't been doing too much damage to kids now, so. I needed to be able to get far enough in here to help uh, to get an item for kids now. Not for her specifically, but. Yeah, I could be casting Powerball with her, but I kind of like using her for heal. Yeah, we got five karma for killing all those guys. I mean, you have to kill them all to get this, but, you know. It's like, get out of the way, Nunez. How much damage did you take? Ooh, better uh, heal yourself. Cast, uh, cast healing magic on yourself. And I'll heal myself later. Oh, yeah, I got, I keep, sometimes I forget to press, uh. Oh, wasn't there a cool man behind this thing? Oh, did I argue? No, I didn't grab it. Hmm. Oh, well. He probably dropped something, but... Oh, well. Anyway, yeah, I want to go through this whole place and basically clean out everyone, so let's see what's down this way. But yeah, we need to find Vladimir so we can get that true name of the Jester, so... Oh, another cool man. And yeah, obviously you don't want to pull all the enemies out of the woodwork. Um, you want to ice... You want to basically just go, you know, one person at a time. So you don't, uh... If you have the karma, you might you might consider summoning or um, karma. If you have the uh, charisma, you might consider hiring a couple of uh, shadow runners here. It helps reduce how long it takes to take these guys out. It's just costly. That's all. We're doing that. So. Oh, here it is. That's the thing I wanted. The mesh jacket from this samurai, uh, samurai warrior. And uh, in from you. Oh, we have a key. In there. Bronze key. Hmm, what's that for? But anyway. So the mesh jacket, don't we already have a mesh jacket? Yes, we do. Uh, there's two different, great. Uh, <laughs> there's two different mesh jackets. There's one you can sell and one you can't sell for whatever reason. So usually you want to equip yourself with a bad mesh jacket and then you um, quote unquote the bad one. Uh, and then you sell the other one for some money. However, I want to give the mesh jacket to, uh, whoops. I want to give the mesh jacket to uh, Kitsune there so she'll survive longer. <laughs> No. Let's ever put that armor on. Yeah, use it. Oh, that's right. She's not strong enough. Crap, I forgot. That's why you want to give her the leather jacket. Well, that's something to consider. Okay, we'll just give it back to ourselves. My bad. We'll give it to another shadow runner. That's right. I was I thought I I found it weird in my notes that I was like, why didn't I just give her the mesh jacket? That's right, you have to have a strength of four to equip it, but the leather jacket only needs a one, so never mind. Forget I said anything, folks. I don't know what I'm talking about. Yeah, I just I didn't read it far enough ahead of my notes. That's that's why. Oh well, I don't mind that she doesn't have it. It's just it make it a bit squishier for the rest of the game. And unfortunately, you can't buy the uh, uh, mesh jacket or anything like that. So oh well. I have to have a heal herself here pretty soon. I kind of wish you could buy like old equipment back, like the mesh jacket or, or uh, leather jacket or anything like that. But oh well. God, these guys take forever to die. <laughs> Yeesh. No, but there's a. Uh, a little hidden area over there. All right, doing uh, doing not too bad. All right. I mean, other than not having the other. Oh wait. Did... No. Okay. Fine. Whatever. 
But yeah, usually if you don't have kits in here, don't care about Shadow Riders, yeah, you could uh, um, just sell that mesh jack and, and equip the tainted one. Because the one you can't, basically can't sell is the bad one, quote unquote. Anyway, how do we get through that door? Let's use this bronze key we just got. Strange looking key. All right. And how much damage did you take, Kitsune? Not too much, but we are getting into an area that would get kind of dangerous, so I'm going to go ahead and heal you again, just in case. Uh, now, we're coming apart the part of the game where we now have a really good spot for um, level grinding. It's here, actually, in this uh, dungeon. You're probably why it's just, they're just zombies. Well, they'll keep respawning over and over and over again in uh, very specific rooms. So this is actually one of the best spots to uh, fight them. Is uh, The only problem with that is that if you're not careful, you will... Uh, um, you could get overwhelmed by these guys, you know, with all the damage they do. I'm just showing off all the rooms because there's no... Uh... <clears throat> I think, if I remember correctly, it might be this room. One of the rooms, it's where you basically could just hide right behind um, the like one of the coffins here and just wait for the zombies to keep attacking you over and over and over again. Whoop. Okay, so how's your HP, Kitsune? Let me examine you really quick. Oh, there we go. Okay, you didn't take too much damage, so... Okay. Let's go in here. So, oh, we got some zombies. Ah, watch out. Oh, yeah, I need to look over the stats. So, the zombies in here, there's two different ghouls. The ghouls on the outside of this place have 15 HP, 8 attack, 3 defense, drop 5 experience. And then the ghouls in here have 20 HP, 8, eight attack, 0 defense, and 3 experience per each. Uh, oh, and the major, or this, oh no, I already got on Samurai Warrior, so, okay. Uh, okay. Let's see. Ah, there he is, the vampire. So, <clears throat> so this guy we cannot damage at all. Like, no matter how many times I shoot him, he will um, do things. But there is a way to stop him. Remember earlier about someone saying the strobe lights really affected the vampire? Well, let's use the strobe on him. Oh, let's examine it first. It gives off a bright flash when used. Okay. But yeah, you can't damage him no matter what you do. So let's use the strobe. And he'll, like, run around now, so... Oh, I can't see! Okay, so now, he's basically a, a, a vulnerable. So now, how do we, how do we, uh, what do we do to him now that we can't damage him? Well, what are, what are, uh, vampires weak to? The stake! So let's, uh, let's examine it. Get sharp wooden stake. So let's use the stake on him. And he makes that screech noise. Ah! Ah, oh, I can't see! Wait, a stake! No, no! Wait, if you can't see, how do you know a stake's there? I'll tell you anything, anything! Just keep that stake away from me! Yeah, I don't want, don't want that stake with A1 sauce now, do you? So, um, so let's ask him about that gesture spirit that he was talking about. So, His name is Zervanda! It's Zervanda! You'll find him at Bremerton! Please go away! So he, yeah, e either way you get the, the information from him. Um, but... We already know that um, Nirvanda is not his uh, is not his actual Nirvanda is not the real name of the jester. So actually, let's ask him about Bremerton and see if he says anything. I told you everything. I know. I'm not lying. Believe me. Uh, let's ask him about Nirvanda, just the name. Okay. So anyway, so we could leave. We know he's lying though. So we need to threaten him again. Threaten him one more time. Let's use the stake on him again. Leave me alone. I'm not hurting anyone. Go away, I've told you everything I know. Let's ask him about the gesture spirit again. It's Nirvana. Oh no, okay, it's Laughlin. Laughlin, it's Laughlin. You find him in Bremerton. He haunts some ship down there. No, go away. Now, you can leave the vampire alone, and that's all you need to do. You can just straight up leave this place and leave the vampire alone. But it's a vampire. He lied to us, and he'll kill people, and all this other stuff. And the Shadowrun universe is not a nice universe, so... You know, no morality here. I mean, you can't leave, but there's no, like, extra karma or anything for doing that. And you lose out on some money for doing this. So let's stake him one more time. Goodbye, vampire. And we get four karma for that. So And 5,000 new yen on him. Yep. Uh, oh, look at all the bones. But yeah, if you cut, if you destroy the um, zombies, they would just keep... They would eventually respawn after a while. So you could destroy all the, all of them, but it's just easier just to go on it. Because we got a room right up ahead where we can grind for... Um, uh, New Yen, so let's see if we can get... It's like right here? Yeah. It's about right here. Sometimes you can get unlucky and uh, 
And yeah, we just want to basically... So what I'm going to do off screen is I'm going to um, sit here and grind on ghouls for a while. Um, what I want to do is basically what I'm going to do is I'm just going to grind the, the stuff I don't care about too much. And maybe my magic. I'd really suggest if you don't want to grind your guy up to max stats or whatever, which I think body and magic, it's 20. Um, strength is like, I think, 7. I'll have to double check on that. Charisma, 6. Uh, firearms, you can get that up to 16. But anything past 7 is pointless because you've already got max accuracy up at this point. Uh, computer at 6. Leadership at 6. Negotiation at 6. Um, you can get uh, your magic maxed out if you want to by Powerball and Heal. Um, but like I said, I want to wait to do that over the course of the game So probably my biggest thing would be just to get magic to 10 and body to 10 if you don't already have that just so you get a decent amount of magic um, at that point uh, Which I might do just because it's annoying to upgrade magic at some point It'll be nice just having a heal battery at some point But what I most likely will do is just max charisma out and get leadership up just so uh, uh, if I decide to hire um, shadow runners to make certain parts just go by faster it'll be a little bit easier so so how much karma will i get will the bones of the 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 smell of the dead never come off my body find out next time in the next episode of shadow run nes snes the beta version thanks for watching hope you enjoyed and i'll see you next time